At 23 minutes past midnight on the 16th of January 1941, the citizens of the district of Deptford in London heard a sound in the night sky not heard before over the British capital. That sound is one of the most infamous of World War II, the Jericho trumpet sound of a diving Stuka. But what was a Stuka doing over London and at night? It was the beginning of a German experiment to see if the Junkers Ju-87 dive bomber could be re-rolled from attacking shipping, radar stations and RAF airfields in the daytime to acting as a nighttime dive bomber raider over the British capital. This was because the Stuka had been found wanting in the daylight roll over southeastern England, easy prey for RAF Spitfires and Hurricanes from the Battle of Britain in the summer of 1940. The Ju-87 first flew in 1935 and was used by the Germans during the campaigns in Poland, Norway and France as flying artillery able to swoop down and precisely bomb enemy positions or convoys. It was a sturdy plane and struck fear into the hearts of the enemy and the defenseless columns of civilian refugees that Stukas also attacked. It carried a two-man crew and could withstand diving speeds of 600 kilometers an hour or 370 miles per hour. The diving procedure was thus. Flying at 4,600 meters or just over 15,000 feet, the pilot would locate his target through a bombsite window in the cockpit floor. Following trim, throttle and dive brake adjustments, the pilot rolled the Stuka 180 degrees, nosing into a dive. The plane had an automatic dive recovery system in case the pilot blacked out due to the G-forces. Plunging earthwards at a 60 to 90 degree angle, at a constant speed of 5 to 600 kilometers an hour, or 300 to 370 miles per hour, an onboard altimeter indicated the bomb release point, usually at 450 meters, or just under 1500 feet. The pilot released the bombs and initiated the automatic pull-out mechanism to pull out of the dive, experiencing 5 plus Gs during the recovery. Once recovered, the pilot took control of the aircraft and flew off. The crew suffered enormous physical strain during the pullout from the dive. Though an excellent dive bomber, the Stuka was very vulnerable to modern fighters, and this was shown graphically during the Dunkirk evacuation and also during the Battle of Britain, when they came up against modern British fighters. A couple of years ago, I had the experience of sitting in a Spitfire Mark I that actually took part in dogfights with Stukas in 1940. The pilot of this Spitfire, squadron leader Geoffrey Stevenson, actually shot down a Stuka near Calais in France on the 26th of May 1940, during the Dunkirk evacuation, and he was then in turn shot down and captured. He ended up in Colditz, and this Spitfire was buried in the beach until 1986, when it was excavated and lovingly restored back to flight, one of only a handful of Mark I Spitfires from 1940 still able to fly today. Junkers 87s made some successful attacks on coastal shipping in the English Channel during the battle's early stages, and in attacks on RAF airfields escorted by Messerschmitt Bf 109s. But because the Stuka was relatively slow compared with its covering fighters, it couldn't be effectively protected. On the 18th of August 1940, the Ju-87 force suffered its worst day over southern England when 16 Stukas were shot down and many more damaged. Over six weeks of operations, the Stuka squadrons lost 59 aircraft, with 33 others damaged. Some 20% of all Stukas deployed against Britain were destroyed. Though reorganized to strike shipping, particularly in the Thames estuary, with one attack on the city of Dover on the 14th of November, bad weather led to a decline in sorties. 
most of the Stuka squadrons began to redeploy to bases in Poland in preparation for Operation Barbarossa, Hitler's invasion of the Soviet Union. By the beginning of 1941, only Sturzkampfgeschwader 1, or Dive Bomber Wing 1, remained in Western Europe, with only 30 aircraft. It was at this point that the Luftwaffe decided to try and use the Stukas as night bombers against the British capital. This was in the midst of the Blitz, the long German bombing campaign against British cities carried out by squadrons of Heinkel 111s, Dornier 17s and Junkers 88s. The planes to be used were all Junkers Ju-87 B-1 models, and each was painted black underneath to help camouflage them at night. Each aircraft would carry a single bomb, the SC-1000 High Explosive, a 1000 kilogram demolition bomb nicknamed the Hermann after Hermann Göring, the head of the Luftwaffe. STG-1 kicked off its night campaign on Wednesday the 15th of January 1941. Please bear in mind that throughout this period London was under virtually nightly attack by German twin-engine bombers. But the sudden appearance of Stukas over the capital, the sound of their Jericho trumpets horribly familiar to British civilians from the newsreels they had seen at the cinema concerning the Polish and French campaigns came as a great surprise. The weather on the night of the 15th to 16th of January was cloudy with snow showers. A pair of Stukas, each carrying one SC-1000 bomb, took off and flew to London, reaching the capital without problems. They started their dives from an altitude of 4,600 metres, the first aircraft attacking Deptford at 23 minutes past midnight, screaming down and releasing its bomb, followed a few minutes later by the second Stuka, which dive-bombed Kidbrook in southeast London in the Royal Borough of Greenwich. No reports of damage were logged, so perhaps any detonations were mixed in with the bombing by regular German aircraft, or the SC-1000s were duds. A third Stuka dive-bombed the Kent port town of Dover at about the same time, the bomb detonating. The London intruders were not intercepted and made it safely back to base. STG-1 tried again on the night of the 17th to 18th of January, again using a pair of Stukas. It was a foggy night over eastern England, and both Ju-87s delivered successful dive-bombing attacks over the capital. The first plane dropped an SC-1000 over Croydon in South London, and the second did the same over West Ham in East London. Post-war searches of local records for both areas showed no incidents in either borough. No casualties were reported anywhere in London that night. Perhaps the bombs were duds. Who knows? The following raid took place two days later on the night of the 19th to 20th of January. This time, 183 German bombers, mostly Heinkel 111s, were sent to bomb London, and STG-1 added a pair of its Stukas to the force. The weather was extremely cloudy at a thousand feet, with rain and snow at times. The first Stuka attack occurred at 6.25pm on Sunday the 19th of January, when the aircraft dived on Greenwich, releasing an SC-1000. the crew recording an explosion and a resulting fire. Stuka No. 2 attacked at 6.39, an SC-1000 landing somewhere over central London, though no clear results were reported. The explosion probably mixed in with all the other German planes bombing London that night. The final attempt by the Luftwaffe to use Stukas as night intruders over Britain ended in destroyed Junkers 87s. In the early hours of the 12th of February 1941, a Ju-87 of 5 Staffel STG-1 was shot down by gunfire from the Royal Navy drifter HMS Eager, crashing into the sea at 4am off Breitling Sea in Essex, both crewmen being killed. Then, on the night of the 13th to 14th of February 1941, a Ju-87 of 9 Staffel STG-1 crashed into the Thames estuary, the cause of the crash remaining unknown, both crewmen being listed as missing. And that was the last time Stukas operated at night against Britain. 
the experiment of using Ju-87s as night intruders over London had worked, but with almost all Stuka squadrons redeployed to other theatres, the technique was not adopted. Instead, other types of German planes would be employed as night intruders to cause disruption on the British home front, in between the more regular attacks by twin-engine German bombers in formations. But I can guarantee that very few people today realise that for a short time, howling Stukas prowled the skies above London and got away with a series of hit-and-run dive-bombing attacks. Many thanks for watching, please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below. Thank you.